Hey there, boys and girls. So this is like a first for me. Like I never really go over like wiki pages or anything like that because a lot of times I don't find it necessary. I, I would rather learn fights like hands on, like get into them and learn them that way. But with the score of the Wicked Moon, like it's it's sort of complicated on what's going on with this fight because there's a lot of moving parts to it. And like a lot of people feel like it's a lot of uh, randomness to this fight. But in fact, um, it's not like every turn. Um, the people that have made this wiki page, they, they've really figured it out and they've done a really, really, really good job of explaining what's going on. Um, but for me personally, it was complicated to understand. Um, I had to really study this and figure out exactly what the web page was trying to tell me. And I kind of want to go over like what I learned from the page with you guys that'll help you guys do your clear. Um, because if you watch like me do the fight, um, what happens on my turn 10 may not be the same thing that happens on your turn 10. And we're going to go over exactly why that is here. I want to cut off my webcam that way. Um, everybody can see the web page uh, clearly. Um, so up first, the missions for this fight is not really that uh, difficult to do. Uh, obviously beat the quest, exp uh, attack with the foe's elemental weakness six times or more, evoke an esper, defeat the moon with magic. Now, the rewards for this fight are very lackluster, um, so if you can't do this fight, you don't have the gear, maybe you don't have the mages, etc, etc, don't feel bad, you're not really missing out on anything. Um, so yeah, there's a quick summary here, we're not going to really touch on that, but if you look here, you've got like all these abilities, and all these descriptions, and thresholds, and stuff like that, and like I said, it was it was a lot, like you got all this stuff right here, 100% to 40%, it was like brain overload for me. Um, I had to really take my time and figure out what was going on. But this chart right here is what you really need to pay attention to. Uh, you've got new moon, waxing moon, half moon, full moon, waning moon. If you think of it like this, new moon is turn one, waxing moon is turn two, half moon is turn three, full moon is turn four, waning moon is turn five, and then it repeats. So on turn six, it goes back to new moon, waxing moon, half moon, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it, this makes a lot more sense especially for me. So let's look at turn one, uh, the new moon. We're going to be taking this comet moon. Uh, the, this, this boss does this attack pretty much all the time. It's basically a single target uh, that ignores cover. So your, your passive provoke is going to be taking this one. In my case, it's going to be Charlotte. Um, and then it's going to do this attack right here, um, Crimson Moon's Descent. That's going to be an AOE physical attack. And... Then it's going to do its normal stuff, and then it's going to do Asteroid Moon, which is an AoE magic attack, okay? So, like, on turn one, I would want to physical cover, because I'm taking mages to this fight, and everybody else is, really. Um, and I'm gearing mine with around 10,000 hit points, 1,000 spirit is what we've all agreed on is, like, a, a safe place for them to be. Um, so they have much less defense. So these physical attacks are really going to, you know, do a lot of damage to our mages, so we want to protect them against that. And when we actually get to doing the fight and other people do it, you'll see how they kind of work the covers uh, with their tanks and stuff. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on that. Like, it's better with visual aid there. And then on turn two, we're going to get the Comet Moon again. It's going to do uh, Lunar Sabbath, which is basically an imperil, and it reduces your uh, magic and spirit. And again, you're getting the Crimson Moon's Descent. That's the uh, AoE physical attack. And then that's it. Um, this stuff right here below 70%, we'll go over that in just a minute. On turn three, it's going to do Sun Reflector. That's an AoE uh, magic attack that's fixed damage. You can't cover it. It's going to hit everybody. Uh, it's going to do its Comet Moon, obviously. And then it's do, going to do Glory of Evil. That is another AoE attack that is uh, fixed. It's going to hit everybody. You can't cover it. It's going to do its normal attacks. And then it's going to do this magic attack that you actually can cover. So if we go back to turn one, we've got a physical attack we can cover. Uh, turn two, we've got another physical attack we can cover. In turn three, here's a magic attack we can cover. Um, you know, maybe your team can survive it if they're beefy enough, but I would like to take this chance right here to try to cover uh, this magic attack and just reduce the overall damage that my team takes. And then on turn four, uh, the full moon, we're going to be taking, again, our, our single target stuff. We're going to take this AoE uh, magic attack. Uh, we can't cover it. Uh, we're going to be taking an AoE physical attack that we can cover. And then the Lunar Revolt is a Dispel. That's going to go on your Provoke Tank, your passive Provoke Tank. And basically that's just going to remove all of its buffs and it has a chance to inflict confusion. Uh, it's really, really good to put Phoenix Esper on your passive Provoke Tank with the Auto Med ability learned. That way if they get confused, the Auto Med will cure the confusion and you can keep on going. 
Uh, and then finally, we're going to go to turn five, Waning Moon. It's going to, again, do a single target stuff. It's going to do this AoE um, magic attack again that you can't cover, and it's normal stuff. Now, this is this is why I wanted to make this video. Um, you see this below 70%. What's going to happen with this boss is when its hit points are below 70%, it's going to pick up these attacks down here. So, you know, when it's below 70%, the new moon phase, that's fine. The waxing moon phase is going to do its single target stuff. It's going to do these imperils and whatnot. It's going to do its AOE uh, physical. And then it's going to do another AOE physical. So you got two AOE physicals on uh, on the waxing moon phase if it's below 70%. And if you don't cover these, your mages are probably going to die here and possibly other characters. And that's really not good. And then your half moon and full moon, nothing really changes below 70%. But the waning moon phase below 70%, you pick up another glory of evil, which is a magic attack you can't cover. So you're really going to want your magic mitigation on this waning moon phase below 70% because you're taking two attacks you can't cover. And also you got dispelled the turn before that. Your provoke tank got dispelled before that. So you really want to get your buffs back online right here, get your mitigations back online so you can deal with these things. Now, all in all, that's not that complicated. Another thing that we have to be mindful of is these thresholds. Now, certain thresholds is uh, they do the threshold attacks in addition to everything else, and some thresholds they do the attacks and then stop. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna look at the eighty percent threshold. You're basically it's gonna put up its uh, mitigations again, and then it's gonna do. Um, it's going to remove, it's going to imperil your confusion, and then it's going to continue on with, your do, with its attacks. 80%, not really that bad. Um, again, 70%, it's going to do the confusion imperil. The only confusions that actually go out in this fight are single targets, so they're going to be going to your passive provoke tank. So these really aren't that bad, but they do, uh, the boss will do these in addition to everything else. And again, on the 60%, it's going to throw its mitigation back up. It's going to do its confusion in peril. Not that big of a deal. Mitigation is really all you got to worry about. But just remember, it's an addition to everything else going on. Now, when you go to 40%, it's going to do these things, and then it's going to end its turn, okay? So basically, um, it's going to put its mitigation up. It's going to kill everybody, so you got to have re-raise to survive it. And it's going to imperil your confusion. We don't care about that. And then it's going to increase its defense and spirit. So it's going to get, it's going to buff itself. It's going to get its mitigation. It's going to kill all your guys and then it's going to stop. Okay. It's going to end its turn right there. Now the 30%, it's going to do its confusion in peril. We don't really care about that and continue its turn. And in the 20%, it's going to end its turn again. Um, this is going to be important when we talk about it in just a minute. I just want to, I just want to highlight this, you know, it's going to put its mitigations back up. It's going to kill everybody. You need to re-raise it. It's going to stop. Okay. And 10% is going to do its confusion in peril again. We don't really care about that and continue its turn. Now, this is the part of the wiki page that confused the hell out of me. Okay, so we've got this 40% to 25%, less than 25%. We got all these freaking attacks. Like, what in the crap is this? Like, I freaked out when I first saw this. I'm like, how in the crap am I going to figure out, like, what's going on here? And, and really, it's very well laid out. Okay, if you look at the numbers on the side... Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That is the turn. Okay, so if you're below forty percent and it's turn, we'll say fourteen. Okay, you're going to get glory of evil, which is a fixed magic AOE. Uh, another glory of evil, fixed magic AOE. Then it's going to do a magic attack that you can cover. So you're going to want to have magic cover here. Um, that's why I was saying earlier that your clear is going to look different than my clear. That's going to look different than someone else's clear. So if, for example, I kill Moon on turn 15, just imaginary numbers, um, and you kill Moon on turn, turn 25, you're going to have to deal with more attacks and different kind of attacks than I had to deal with. So you can't really follow along where, like, I do a physical cover. You're not going to be able to just copy my physical cover or copy my magic cover turn for turn because how I damage the boss and what hit point the boss is at, I'm going to be doing different things than you'll need to do. So I feel like it's really important to kind of point out to people um, how to assess what's going on with this fight uh, for themselves so they can um, do all they can do to mitigate the damage that this boss does because it does do a considerable amount of damage and it's really, it's, this boss is really hard actually. 
um, especially if you're if you're not prepared for what's going on. And again, when the boss goes below 25% hit points, it changes its attack pattern yet again, and that makes it a lot harder. Um, so let's say boss is less than 25% hit points, and we're on turn, uh, I don't know, 26 right here. This is what's going to happen. It's going to do its, it's going to do its the spell. It's going to do a fixed AOE magic attack. Then it's going to do a magic attack that we can cover. So, depending on if the boss is, you know, from 40 to 20, 25 percent, you're going to deal with the chart on the left. And if it's less than 25 percent, you're going to deal with the chart on the right. And again, figure out which turn you're on, and look at the boss's hit points. And then here's your attacks that you're going to do or here's the attacks the boss is going to do, and then you set up how you're going to deal with it from there. I think, for the most part, depending on how well you can gear your units, if, you, if you're if you ever in doubt of what to do, get a physical cover-up. Because most of, the, most of the time, the boss is going to hurt you the most with its physical attacks. There's some rounds, though, where it'll do, like, fixed magic attacks two or three times in a round. Like, let's look at turn 29 right here. This is, like, the worst turn ever in the game. You're going to take, if it's less than 25% hit points, you're going to take a Dispel. You're going to take a Fixed AoE Magic, another Fixed AoE Magic. You're going to take an AoE Physical Attack, another Fixed AoE Magic Attack, and then two Magic Attacks you can cover. I mean, like, turn 29 is like, oh my god, what in the hell's going on? It's going to do, like, so much damage to you. So, I mean, if if I was going to try to live this turn, I would probably pop off Fenrir so I could, you know, have a Evasion for this, you know, uh, with his uh, Mirage, and then I would do a magic cover to try to eat these two magic attacks, so I can at least cover them, and then pray to God that, you know, these fixed magic attacks don't kill my guys. Pro tip, they probably will. So, like I said, I just wanted to bring some attention to this page because I feel like where people are going to struggle is not knowing how to deal with what the moon's going to do because they don't know because it changes literally every single turn and then it changes every turn based off of what percentage hit points the boss is at. It's crazy, but it's very manageable if you follow along with this guide right here. And I know it's kind of lame that, oh, I hate doing bosses and I have to look up so much information. I just want to go in and kill stuff. I totally get that. And I, I think it's kind of neat how this encounter works mainly because somebody's broken it down and put it in such a nice format here. But um, I get that that's not for everybody. And I don't think there's another um, type of boss encounter in FFB that we're going to have to deal with at this extent where it's like this much craziness. So if we can make it through this one, guys, we'll be all right. Um, finally, the last thing I want to touch on is the apostles that it summons. It's going to summon different elemental uh, apostles that is actually random on what how it you know pops those out um it could give you a fire one it, it might give me a, a dark one you know you never really know but you do have to deal with them um now the important thing about the apostles if it's sub 40 percent if it has two opposing apostles that are alive on an even turn meaning um well let, let's back let's backtrack just one second it's going to only spawn apostles on odd turns so if it's an odd turn and it pops out um, a fire one, right? And then and then you take an action and then it's another odd turn and it pops out an ice one. And you still have the fire one left alive and the ice one still left alive at the end of that turn. They're going to do this right here. It's going to be a fixed magic fire and ice damage. All enemies, it's going to inflict berserk to somebody. That probably will kill you because this is what the apostles are doing in addition to everything the moon is doing. So you can see if it's a really gnarly turn and there's an apostle alive and it's doing like all of its crazy stuff like that, you're probably going to wipe. I think that's where a lot of players got like there's RNG to this fight because the attacks go off like so fast they can't really see what's happening. Um, and it's the apostles that get them in a whole bunch of trouble. Um, because, you know, like I said, basically with the with what the moon's doing... You know, your best bet's always physical cover, but I feel like if you can mitigate some of these asteroid moons, that's a good idea. You know, um, like on, let's look at turn five, sub 20%. We get a dispel, we get a fixed magic, another fixed magic, 
uh, we get a physical attack and then two magic attacks. This is this is really bad right here. Well, of course, nobody's going to be sub 20% on turn five right now. But anyways, it's kind of like turn 29 right here where it's just like do your best and hope and hope that you live kind of thing. Um, but I don't know. I just wanted to kind of go over the fight like that. Um, I think this is kind of complicated as far as boss mechanics go in the game. Um, mainly because hi, I'm back. Mainly because you can't you can't just follow along with what somebody else is doing because it's all going to be dependent on what percentage the boss is at, um, what turn it is, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It, it's not it's not complicated if you can look at this and kind of prepare yourself for it. And what I did is I made me a cheat sheet. So basically, what I did was I, I have like this list right here is 40% to 20 to 25%. And I just listed, instead of like the names of the abilities, I just listed what it is. Like turn 16, free turn. Turn 17, it's got fixed AOE magic, AOE physical, and AOE magic. So I know if it's turn 17 and I'm at 35%, I know what's coming and it would be easier for me to deal with. And then I made one from 25% to 0%. Um, that's how I prepared for the fight. Um, you know, because this is a lot of damage going out. And that's why I said a lot of people's going to be running Charlotte on this because she's got that 50% mitigation. She can provide magic mitigation um, herself too. Um, she's really a good unit to use for this. And then, like I said, cover the physical attacks. You can really cut down a lot of the damage. And I feel like that's what most people are going to be doing for this fight. Um, but I just didn't want people to gear up their guys, uh, put their team in play, and then they start getting hit, bombarded with these attacks when they go below 40%, and they just have no idea what's going on. And I know, like, you know, a lot of players know to check the wiki, but to me personally, this was, like, daunting to look at. But once I took my time and I digested exactly what I was looking at, it made a whole lot of sense to me, and I'm like, oh, okay, so this is what I have to do. And, and let's just be frank, some of the turns on Moon... It does crazy, crazy attacks that, like, turn 29 we looked at. Like, what are you going to do on turn 29 besides, you know, hit AoE re-res and hope for the best? Because that's so much fixed attacks going off. Um, but, yeah, I just kind of want to make a video, drawing some attention to this, like I said. Um, try to give you guys as much information as I can to help you, uh, to help you beat this fight. Um, because I don't feel like this is one that you can follow along with somebody. I think this is one that you're going to kind of either have to like have really, really strong gear and just physical cover, hope for the best, or play with your cover tank and then try to mitigate everything you can turn by turn. Um, I, I really look forward to trying this one. Um, I know a lot of people said this is, this is probably the hardest fight we're going to get for a good long while. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to the challenge personally. Um, I'm going to use Suko for this fight. Uh, a lot of people are going to be using Cersei. I think Cersei's totally viable for this. We've got Saul coming up on Friday. Um, I checked out his um, his buffs in the data mine. They look like they're pretty good. I think Saul's going to be definitely powerful for this fight. Um, but if you don't want to spend the lapis to try to get Saul, I think Cersei will work just fine. I know several people's going to be using her. I know several people's using Suko. Um, I think we're going to be totally fine for this fight as long as we prepare ourselves well for what's going to happen during the fight. Um, I hope you liked the video. I was a little bit nervous about making this one right here because, you know, like the wiki stuff's really not my thing, but I feel like for this particular fight, it's going to be really, really helpful <laughs> for, for me and everyone else to use. Um, that's about all I got to say about that. I hope you liked the video. Uh, good luck with this trial this week. Um, whenever I do my clear, leave me a comment. Let me know what kind of team you took. Let me know how hard it was for you. Let me know what turn you killed it on, because I'm curious to see what kind of turn a lot of people end this fight on. I, I don't really know, because I, I never played, uh, I never did this fight on JP, so I don't really know how the damage feels, you know, with the different kind of mages that we have access to, they have access to. I'm really curious to see, you know, how we do with this fight. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the week. Toodaloo.